the book of Revelation, chapter number 3. A, little, uh, a brief message this evening has kind of been on my heart the last few days. Uh, if you missed the message this morning, uh, bus workers, junior church workers, whoever, or maybe you wasn't here, please, you need to please get that. I preached on the world's greatest wrestling match, and uh, it'll help us get ready for prayer meeting Friday night and the youth rally. So uh, I we'll talked about wrestling, Jacob wrestling with the angel. And uh, so make sure you get that message from this morning. It's probably already on, on YouTube, I'd say, by now. Revelation chapter number 3, we're going to jump right in here in the middle of this message here to um, this uh, sixth church, I believe. Um, yeah, the Philadelphia church. And the Lord gives them a warning. There's seven of them here. And the seven church ages and churches, go you know, Revelation 1, 2, 3, the word church is mentioned about 20 times in chapter 1, 2, and 3. From chapter 4, verse 1 on, the church is not even mentioned. Something happened in chapter 4, verse 1. And John is a type of the church. We'll study that sometime. So, we're not just crazy people believe stuff because we've heard it all our life and don't know no better. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, look at verse number 11. And I'm going to just use this tonight. Behold, the Lord said, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. He said, look, I'm coming back soon. You better hang on, do what's right, so somebody won't steal your crown off your head. You lose your crown. You don't lose your soul, your salvation, but you can sure lose a crown. And so tonight, I want to preach about when, hap when Jesus comes. What will happen when Jesus comes? Everywhere I go tonight, people are talking about the Lord coming back. Even people don't even go to church. It's a good conversation starter to talk about all the stuff that's going on in the world politically, uh, the Wuhan flu, all the stuff that's going on. It's, it's a good conversation starter. I give people a track, and they say, and I said, you know, boy, if there's a bad thing on it, they said, it sure is. The Bible's coming to pass right before our eye, and it is. It really, 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 really is. And so tonight, I'm going to talk about the Lord coming. How many of you sincerely, you don't have to raise your hand, just in your heart, would like to see the Lord come back? Wouldn't that be the best thing in the world? Glory to God, brother. You ain't got a problem that couldn't be solved in 30 seconds after Jesus come back. Hey, man, thank God he's coming one day. Wouldn't it be something if he came tonight? Now, I, now I dread that judgment seat of Christ. But after that, it's all over but to shouting, buddy. And I'm, we'll walk in on gold streets and live forever with the Lord. And it's called the second coming of Christ. Now, that day of the Lord in the Bible... That day of the Lord uh, seldom is referring to one day. When it said the Bible said the day of the Lord, it's not always talking about one single 24-hour day. Occasionally it might be, but most of the time it's talking about a long period of time. And the truth is the day of the Lord starts at the rapture and goes all the way through throughout the millennium. The millennium will be that seventh day, the day. It'd be like now, it'd be like us saying uh, Back in the day, back in the old day, you know, we don't mean one day. We mean a period of time. And that's what God meant when he said the day of the Lord. You, you can find references in the Old Testament. People who don't believe that don't spend a lot of time reading the prophets in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament prophets that say that day is this and that day is that. In that day, in that day. You read Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel and all them and see how many times you see that phrase, that day, in that day. And it goes from everything, from, uh, from uh, the, the millennium to back during the tribulation, the antichrist and everything. So when the Lord says that day, he's not always meaning one 24-hour period. Over 200 times in the New Testament, there's reference made that Jesus is coming back. When I was little, my mom used to sing that too. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom. Remember that? Boy, I used to think about that. I said, my goodness, one of these days the Lord's coming back. And I wasn't even saved, but I remember thinking about the Lord coming back. Now, three little thoughts here tonight, and we've got, I've got meetings and everything I've got to do tonight. So let's look first of all at this thought. You know, when the Lord comes back, he's going to fulfill Scripture. 
Do you realize tonight that this book right here is about three-fourths prophecy in the Old Testament, and a lot of those prophecies have never yet been fulfilled. Many of them were fulfilled at his first coming, and the rest of them will be fulfilled as over. Not one jot, not one tittle will fail from that book till every word is fulfilled. I am amazed at the attitude that so many Christians have today about the Bible. They have doubts about it. And then there's the preachers. That's where it comes from, preachers. Preachers go to seminary, and a professor stands up there and says, Now we know. I heard a guy, I heard a guy saying uh, this week, and I'm going to let you hear something in a minute. I heard a guy the other day. He said, Now we know that that Old Testament says Joshua went in there and killed all them people. And we know we're not supposed to go in and kill people. And I thought, it's, how, how could a person be that dumb and claim to be a preacher? Of course. Of course we're not supposed, we don't go, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Joshua and them was fighting wars, wars. And that's a type, those Old Testament wars are a picture of battles, spiritual battles that you and I fight now. We see pictures of New Testament salvation in the Old Testament. As one man said, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. They're intertwined with each other. You can't separate them. They complement and explain each other. And so the Lord comes. He's going to fulfill the Scripture. Let me give you a couple of them. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. This is Scripture, people. This is prophecy. For the Lord Himself... The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. That's that trump, that last trump. Uh, You know, a lot of people say, well, that's the last trump. He didn't say last trumpet. That's different. The last trump. Trump is the sound a trumpet makes. That's the sound of it. And he said, at the last trump. So when 1 Thessalonians come, the Lord descends from heaven with a shout. Can you know somebody said, I don't believe in shouting. Well, the Lord's going to shout one of these days. He sure is. Can you imagine all of a sudden the Lord comes down and he says, uh, come up hither. And buddy, I'll hear my name and you'll hear your name. And whatever your name is, you're saved. You'll hear it, brother. And I'm telling you, it's like, Now you see me, now you don't. Just like that, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, 1 Corinthians 15, that scripture in 1 Thessalonians said, the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout. Hey, let's go. That's right. You believe in shouting in, won't you? That's right. And the Lord's going to call us out of this world. He's going to fulfill the scripture. And... uh, In John chapter 14, verse 6, he said, If I go away, I will come again. The signs are everywhere. Things are happening that we've never seen before. Unbelievable things that we are seeing happening in this world tonight that it's just uh, 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 people are so blind. I mentioned this morning in Sunday school. It's amazing to me how blind people are to the Scripture. They have no idea, no idea where they're going. They have no idea where they're going. We was out the other night in the yard, and uh, um, um, and Frankie, the, we got 10 million little frogs in our in our in the holler up there. I don't know if it's because we got that pond down there or water, but I'm telling you, yeah, at night you can hear them with the doors closed. And have beep beep beep. Y'all got frogs? Y'all got peep frogs out? Well, I'm telling you, we do millions of them. I mean, I counted coming up my driveway, 25 of them guts splashed out on the, uh, really, 25. When I was running up the driveway, one, two, three, four, five, six, 25, just going uphill. I bet there's 10,000. Oh, you went all the way down Hoppy Tom. I mean, there's just guts, 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 guts. Frogs, they just popped out their belly. And, and, and they come out like that, and they're out there, and they're going peep, peep, and he loves them, don't you? We like them froggies, don't we? And we got there, and he, I said, you want to go see the frogs, Frank? He said, yeah. And I took him out there, and sure enough, there was one. And I said, there he is. And, that, uh, and he said, ooh. He said, can I tell he, he went like that, and he went, and that frog jumped, and he jumped back like that. And it hopped, and it hopped, and it hopped on a cross tie, and then it got in the grass. And I said, where's he going? He said, to the dolly store. That's what he calls the dollar store, the dolly store. I said, no, I don't think he's going to the dollar store. Uh, but see, in his mind, he thought that frog was going to the dollar store. He has no idea, no conception of a mile. That frog might have, he might have been going to the dollar store. I don't know. He might be there by now. Uh, but 
but uh, he, he, he has no clue of where he's at geographically. And that's exactly where most people are spiritually tonight. They have no idea. They have, the average person out here, even church people, have no idea where they are on God's plan and calendar of scheme of how this world's going to go. You know, if you're, if you're a Bible believer, you see it plain as day. Uh, you got one day, two days, three days, four days. Jesus dies on the cross. Five days, six days. Seventh day, day of rest. We're right in there between that sixth and seventh one somewhere. Right in there. You know it plain as day. I know people differ on how they view some of that, but either way you cut the cake, brother, we're near the end. We're near the end. Ladies and gentlemen, the signs are everywhere. The signs are everywhere. Let me say secondly tonight, he's coming to finish what he started. Amen. The Lord's going to come back and finish what he started. I'm going to tell you something about God. He don't start something and not finish it like a lot of people. He starts something, brother. He gets the job done. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, it said, He that begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm telling you, the Lord done something in me when I was 18 years old. I'm telling you, I've, 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 I've made a mess of things. I've failed the Lord a million times. But I tell you something, buddy, he started something in my heart back yonder when I was a teenager that he ain't never left me alone one minute. And he's still there tonight. And one day he'll finish finish me and present me faultless before the throne of God and I'll be just like Jesus. He'll finish what he started. He started a church there on the day of Pentecost. Uh, they formed the body of Christ, which was not in the Old Testament. And they made the body of Christ, and he'll pick it up at the rapture, and he'll finish the work and present that bride to her husband. Then we're engaged to him right now. We are espoused. But ladies and gentlemen, he's going to finish it one of these days. He's working on us. I like that little song. He's still working on me. Remember that? To make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. Now I'm glad that he is. I'm glad, thank God that he is. I'm glad, brother, you know, you, you can feel the Lord working on you. You can feel him trying to draw you close, can't you? You can feel him. When you make up your mind to seek the Lord, like I said this morning, everybody that fasted this week, everybody that fasted this week got your share of a battle, didn't you? Buddy, did you feel Satan coming against you like that? He don't like it, man. He don't like it. And we fail the Lord. I was, got a young man in here tonight. Uh, oh, that's sitting right over in this section over here. Uh, and there's one of my daughter's kids. I won't say which one. Uh, it's not the oldest one, but it's not the youngest one. And uh, 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 Big T over there uh, the other day did something he shouldn't. And his mama said, you do this? He said, no. <laughs> Four years old. You think we ain't got no sin nature? He's still working on us. She said, tell him. Did you do that? He said, no. <laughs> she said, tell him. That's why I used to do them. Look at me. Look at me right in the eyes. I used to tell my girls, I'd say, look, you got one more chance to tell the truth. You'd be a lot better off. That's what I tell Marty. What's she at? Oh, that's what I tell Marty. I said, Marty, you, one, you bought a lot better off to go ahead and tell the truth. Get it over with, right? But we're not natured like that. Our nature is do like Adam and Eve, run and hide. That's our nature. You got, run and hide. But anyway, she said, look at me. You been, you do that? He said, no. She said, that's a lie. That's a lie. And he said, is my nose growing? She was, oh, well, you have to turn your head and laugh. He'd been watching Pinocchio, you know. And, and, and it didn't grow, did it, Big T? That's what I call him, Big T. Your nose didn't grow, did it? Okay, good. Good. But you know what? We, <laughs> Lord, if that was true, I know some people couldn't get in the building tonight. They'd have to sit back there in the back and it'd bump a wall up here. But did you know what? Listen, that's the way we are. We're natured. Our nature is wrong. Our nature is the wrong way. Human nature is automatically go the wrong way. Automatically. The Bible said the wicked go astray as soon as they're born. Speaking lies. Little babies lie. 
No, brother, they sure do. You can take one less than a year old, and it'll go, ah, 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 ah. you think it's dying, and you pick it up, and it'll go, hey. See, that? he's just lying, make you think he's dying, and he really ain't. I've seen him do that to get out of church. Get out of church. I've seen them scream and holler in church. Then mama picks them up, take them out, and they grin all the way out the door. Now, when they do that, mamas, you give them something to really cry about. <laughs> That's right, brother. That's right, brother. You, you give them something. Right, listen, this world's work, wicked. It's got worse every day. It's off subject. But you know that $1.9 trillion, whatever that thing was, uh, what the stimulus that uh, the government did the other day? $1.9 trillion. Nine trillion dollars. And everybody was so dumb, they said, wow, cool, I got $1,400. You know, the government don't have nothing except what they take from us. Where do you think government gets money? From us. So they done the math, and each one, they put each one of us in debt, $14,000. Every taxpayer will have to pay eventually $14,000 to pay that $1.9 trillion back. We get $1,400. Some people, I ain't. Has anybody, anybody got theirs yet? Uh, but anyway, we, we've been had, people. They done pulled the wool over us. You just, oh, here's 1400 Shut up and vote for me next time. Yeah, yeah, I will. That's, that's, that's the, that's, that's the, listen, this Wuhan flu is the best gift the Democrats ever got. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm telling you something, brother. It's a wicked, wicked, wicked time. I'm going to let you hear something right now. Get ready, Dylan. What I'm going to let you hear is two preachers, kids. I'm not going to name her name. It's not important. Both preachers are extremely famous. Everybody in here knows one of them. You might know the other one. But this is the generation of preachers that's coming up next. Listen to this philosophy of this preacher. I, got, I think it's one, two, three, and four. There, you just let it play though. I'll tell you to stop. You ready? This preacher's son who's now preaching, getting ready to take in his daddy's footstep one of the largest churches in America. Listen to this. This is what you get on Sunday. Go ahead. But their parents first. And I know they recorded all those services because they were proud of me. And in the same way, God is proud of you. Oh. He's sitting on the front row of heaven with his phone pointed in your direction. God is sitting on the front row of heaven with his phone. It's filming you because he's so proud of you. Go ahead. Imagine he's sitting on the front row of heaven with his phone pointed in your direction. He's cheering you on. He's celebrating every step that you take. Oh, uh, he wants to remember oh, every God. little triumph in your life. Right, hold You're back, back that one up there. He's celebrating every move you make. He watches every step you take. What, what in the world does some nut get something like that? That's as far away from Bible preaching as you can possibly get. Let me tell you something, buddy. God ain't sitting on the front row of heaven celebrating every step you take. The only mercy we got from God is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Without that, we're sinners. We're doomed, buddy. We're shot. It's a fearful thing to fall into his hand. Our God is a consuming fire. The Bible said there's none good. No, not one. He's not sitting up there cheering up for us. He's having mercy on us through the blood of Jesus. That's it. That's it. All right, do them over again. Listen to this. It's a preacher. He's cheering you on. He's celebrating every step that you take. He wants to remember every little triumph in your life. You're so important to him, he doesn't want to miss a moment. I once heard a pastor say the best way to get more souls into the kingdom of heaven isn't converting people. Cut it off! Now we're going to do that one again, that last one. This is another preacher you're getting ready to hear. Well, he ain't a preacher. This one went to college and became an atheist. And what happens when a preacher don't really believe the Bible, their sons and daughters go get educated, and they see hypocrites in the church, and they just turn against it altogether. Now, that first guy, have y'all noticed that's the kind of preaching you hear on TV? You're wonderful. You're awesome. God just, uh, you're amazing. God, well, everybody said, oh, man, I went to church today, and it made me feel good. You're not always supposed to feel good. Sometimes you ought to leave here feeling like a dog. 
<laughs> you know, oh, Lord, I don't know, I got to do better, Lord. Sometimes you need to leave like that. You're not always supposed to say everything's great and everything's wonderful. Because it ain't. I mean, they's, they's hell to pay, brother, uh, when, you ain't, when you don't do right. Now, this guy has now become an atheist, and he's going to give you his view of the Bible. And um, it's oh, uh, in Ecclesiastes 4. And listen to how twisted in his mind he takes about. This is what happens when people that don't know God try to understand the Bible. The Bible is a spiritual book and it's spiritually discerned. You can't understand the Bible without the Spirit of God leading you and revealing it to you. You know, when Peter said, Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God, you know what Jesus told him? He said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hadn't told you. He said, God revealed this to you. And that's what's got to happen to you. The Lord has to give it to you that the Bible is true in the Word of God. Now, just listen to this. This is spewed poison from the devil. Go ahead. I once heard a pastor say that the best way to get more souls into the kingdom of heaven isn't converting people, it's making them. But listen to this delightful piece of existential dread from Ecclesiastes. I declared that the dead who had already died are happier than the living who are still alive. Relatable, but better than both is the one who has never existed. That's the Bible that says that. Of the three states of being that are available to potential humans, God apparently thinks that their current state is the ideal one, non-existence. It's only going to take two holy seconds for someone to come along and say, I'm taking this out of context. But you know what? It's pretty clear, assuming you're supposed to take the Bible literally. It's completely cool, obviously, to disagree with Ecclesiastes, just like you can disagree with the rest of the arbitrary writings that amalgamated into the Bible. But if you're going to say that it's God's literal words, well, they just told you it's stupid to have babies. It don't say it's stupid to have babies. It might have been stupid to have that one. But, but, but this don't say that. Let's read what that scripture really says. Now, now, he goes around and speaks on a college campus, and them poor kids at college, they don't read the Bible, they don't know what's in it. So he gets up and laughs at the book of Ecclesiastes and says, see, God said it's better for you to never been born than you to uh, live or die. He, you're just a loser. You ain't. How, how stupid the Bible is. Let's read that scripture. Look at chapter 4 and verse 1. I return, consider the oppressions. Look at it. That are done. The tears, it's talking about the book of Ecclesiastes, the whole theme of the book of Ecclesiastes, people, is under the sun. Under the sun. It's man naturally in this world. It's not eternity. It's not heaven and hell. It's under the sun. Very, very clear. And so he's so much pain, so much sorrow, so many tears in this life. He said there's no comforter. Verse 2 Wherefore, I praise the dead, which are already dead, more than living, which are yet alive. Now, anybody that's got a spiritual bone in their body can understand that. He's saying there's so many tears and everything. My goodness, them dead people are better off than all these people here suffering. That's true. That's true. Nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Look at that. Look at what he said. Verse number three. Yea, better is he than they, both they which hath not yet been. That means a kid that ain't been born yet is better off than somebody suffering in this world. He didn't say God told you not to have kids. In that, whatever version he was quoting might say that. But the real Bible said that a child hadn't been born yet is spared all the hurt and pain and sorrow of this world. Now see how slick the devil is. And you watch these people, these stand-up comedians, and these people that stand up in these places and, and life at the Bible, they, they assume the ignorance of their audience that don't check them, and they go ahead and say wicked stuff about the Bible, and the audience just laughs about it because that makes them feel comfortable in their sins, thinking there ain't no God we don't have to answer to him, and they're laughing their way to hell. The real Bible says you do face God, there is a judgment, and the Lord's going to finish what he started. Number three, and I'm through. He's going to free the saints. Thank God we're going to be free from this old world. We're beginning, to, we're, we're beginning to be like, and I've always thought this, we're beginning to be like the children of Israel back in Egypt. We really are. We're starting to be like the children of Israel. I used to read that a long time ago, and I said, do you know when God delivered Israel out of Egypt? When they started crying for him too. Remember that? 
They stay down there for hundreds of years, and all of a sudden they start saying, please, God, please, God, get us out of here. And the Lord raised them up and delivered Moses and got them out. You know when the Lord come back? When his people start wanting him to. That's right, that's right. And I've heard more people in the past year say, I just wish the Lord would come. I just wish the Lord would come. That lets me know we're getting close to it. The Lord of God, you know what? We ought to pray. It's scriptural. That wait a little longer, please, Jesus, is not scriptural. You know, let me tell you what is scriptural? Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus, the last prayer in the Bible. You say, well, Brother Danny, that scares me. You better get right. You better get your business right, buddy. Uh, you better get your bags packed. You better sit with your feet untangle and pay your bills. Make it right with your neighbor because the Lord's coming back. Sooner the better. Sooner the better. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to talk big, brother. Listen, the Lord coming back tonight, you'd never have to pay another bill. You'd never have to punch another clock. You'd never have to worry about your kids no more. You'd never have to worry about sickness. You'd never go to another doctor. You'd never have another burden. You'd never shed, shed another tear after the judgment seat. Thank God that'd be the best thing to have. He's going to free us one day from this old world. Bitter, hard bondage we're in. and We're fixing to see it tighten up on us. Uh, we have been absolutely brainwashed with this Wuhan flu stuff in this past year. I, I'm, now, when it first came out, nobody knew what was going on and everything, and we all thought, well, well we've got to do this, we've got to do that. Listen, it's been a year and something, and the world's still stuck right where they was this time last year. Yeah. You remember when they first come out, they said, uh, now, we're going to have to give you two weeks now, and everything will be all right. It's been 56 or something like that, and no end in sight. Now they're saying you've got to have two masks even if you've had both vaccines. Oh, what good did it do you? I, and I'm not, I'm not saying people had not been sick and died. I'm not saying that at all. But something sure happened to the flu this year, didn't it? Where'd the flu go? Did it cure it? I am, I'm just going to give you a little, something bothers me. I'm sick of that word COVID. Amen. Sick of it. That's why I deliberately say Wuhan flu. They, a kid was at school the other day and fill, had to fill in the blank and, and there were Christian schools teaching Bible lessons and stuff and it said, uh, at the, you know, blank, 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 V-I-D. Who killed the giant? COVID was the answer. And we beat that into people's heads. We, it's been beat in our head. Well, that's all anybody thinks about. It's almost like I get sick. I hear on people on the news say, I had the COVID, and she had the COVID, and I had the COVID, and, had the, and you've had the COVID. It's almost like they're proud of it. Like, I'm, I had the COVID. It's, it's a, there's a weird obsession with that word. And if you say that, I mean, I ain't saying it's wrong to say it. I'm just sick of hearing it. I've had the COVID. I've had the COVID. And it's like, yay, we're, we're against the COVID. We're doing our part. We're better than you are. We're saving the world. I've had the backs. Well, if you have, that's fine. It's between you and the Lord. Uh, and if you ain't, that's fine. It's between you and the Lord. But it's, it's not a badge of honor. That don't make you a great citizen or the savior of the world or, or nothing like that. Brother, I'm telling you tonight, uh, we're going to be free from this stuff one of these days. They're trying to clamp us down. But if the wrong people is in power, well, there are, the wrong people is in power. But if they ever get their way, if they ever get their way, they'll shut up people like me. Hollering, screaming, disagree. No dissenting voices allowed. Cut you off internet. Cut you off. Uh, my buddy over yonder, uh, Chet, that makes all of our YouTube, puts all of them on YouTube and everything. He said, he said, I'm putting all your stuff on something. I don't even know what it was. Uh, uh, some uh, MP3s and some other kind of something. I don't even know what he's talking about. He said, so when they kick you off YouTube, we can still hear all the sermons. It's coming. It's coming. They done got rid of them. That UFO one I did. Well, God, you have to search real hard to find it. And I'm telling you tonight, I've been. Uh, you, ain't, you ain't preaching much if you don't go to uh, YouTube jail once in a while. Uh, but I'm telling you tonight, we're living in a wicked time. I'll tell you this, I gotta go. Uh, I was in Asheville this week trying to get my taxes done so I could get my fourteen hundred dollars. Put my tax man said, "You go over here and get that done, Danny. You'll get that fourteen hundred I said, "Whoa!" 
Let's do it. So I done it early this year, and I went to Asheville. Asheville is not the place you want to hang out. It used to be. I remember for many, many years, we used to love to go to Asheville. We'd go there. Only we could see the mountains. It's absolutely one of the prettiest places in the world, really. It really is. And a lighthouse for the Lord for hundreds of years. Old mountain preachers all over, old Ralph Sexton Sr. and then Ralph Jr. And the devil saw that and he said, we're going to stop this. We're going to put that light out. Bam! He said, come here, come here, come here. They started coming from hither and thither and everywhere and descended on Asheville. And it ain't the same no more. I went in, the lady sit in the tax office, and I, like I always do, I give her a track. I said, Jesus, I said, Jesus loves you. She said, I couldn't even get, to, she was way over there, I was way over here, so I just hollered at her. They had a thing right here, you couldn't go no further than that. You murder her if you do that. And I, I said, Jesus loves you. And uh, I think I gave her a track. Left, oh, I left it on the desk, something like that. Anyway, I did say, Jesus loves you. And she looked at me for a minute and she said, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So, and she looked at me and she said, yeah, I saw a bumper sticker the other day and it said, Jesus died for our sins, so let's get our money's worth. And she said that, I thought, oh my goodness. I'm telling you, that hurt my heart. It hurt what you're saying was, since Jesus paid for all our sins, let's get our money's worth. Everybody sin all you can. That's his world, buddy. Don't you think for a second, if he was here tonight, they wouldn't do the same thing to him again. They hate the Lord Jesus Christ. But buddy, when he comes, he's going to free the saints. Looks like a bird in prison I dwelt, brother. We're going to sail away and say, goodbye, cruel world, goodbye, when Jesus comes. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Head bowed and eyes closed. You've been playing games with God? Come on. You've been goofing around, messing around, not living right, been sinning? Have you been living for the devil? Ever head bowed and ever eyes closed? I want to ask you a question tonight. If the Lord came tonight, would you be ready? If he came tonight, would you be ready? You say, Brother Danny, that scares me. That scares me. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Young lady, you got mama, that you got kids, you got get you're responsible for them. You're responsible for them to be in church. You're responsible for them to serve God. You are responsible for your family, men, ladies. Let's get in this altar tonight. And let's say, Lord, even so, come quickly. Help us to be prayer warriors. Let's get, come on, let's gather around here tonight. Everyone can, will, just join in here. And let's pray, Lord, come. Get us out of here. And if the Lord don't come for the youth rally, the Holy Ghost will come. Do a great work. Father, do what ought to be done right now. Lord, bless this church. Put your hand on Shining Light Baptist Church for the glory of God. Whatever you do, we'll thank you and praise you for it. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen, amen. We're singing this evening. God's speaking to your heart. You get out of your seat. Maybe you've never even been saved. Be a good time to come right now. Go ahead. Hey, y'all. Hey, man. Hey, man. Come on, come on. Get down here and let's pray tonight. Free to all the healing stream. Flows from Calvary's mountain Say it. in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. We do it tonight till my raptured soul shall find rest. Rest beyond the oh, yeah. river. Let's sing another verse. Sing another verse. Near the cross, a trembling soul. Amen. Love and mercy Amen. found me. Amen. Amen. Get your heart right. Better get your heart right.
get your business right. The morning star sheds its beams around me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Amen. Amen. Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. So I'm still praying up here tonight.